In this video, I'll show you how to set up Prometheus in Kubernetes cluster. In the theoretic part of Prometheus, I explained how it works and what are the parts or components of Prometheus. So there is a Prometheus server at its core that stores and processes the metrics data. And there is an alert manager that you can use to send alerts based on the data Prometheus collected and processed. And of course, you want to see the data you have gathered and scraped in Prometheus visualized in a UI. Prometheus has its own UI, but you can also use a UI for data visualization like Grafana, which lets you build pretty powerful visualization dashboards from Prometheus metrics data. So there are several moving parts and components in Prometheus monitoring stack. So how do you go about deploying it in Kubernetes cluster? And there's actually several different ways of doing that. First one is putting together all the configuration files you need for all the parts. So for each component of the Prometheus monitoring stack, basically creating those YAML files for Prometheus stateful set, alert manager, Grafana deployments, all the config maps and secrets that you need, etc and then going ahead and executing them in the right order because of the dependencies. Honestly, I can't really think of many use cases in which you would go with this option because it's pretty inefficient. It's a lot of effort and you pretty much need to know what you're doing or you have to find a good step-by-step -step guide and hope that each step works as described, which usually it doesn't. The second way and a more efficient way is using what's called operator. I will explain the concept of operators in more detail in a later video and I'll link it up there. But generally speaking, think of an operator as a manager of all Prometheus individual components that you create. So stateful set and deployment, for example, will manage their pod replicas, like restart them when they die, make sure they're accessible and so on. In the same way, operator will keep an eye and manage the combination of stateful set, deployments, and all the other components that make up Prometheus stack as one unit so that you don't have to manually manage those separate pieces. So in this option, you would go and find an operator for Prometheus and deploy it in a cluster using the configuration files of the operator. The third option, which I think is the most efficient one, is using Helm chart to deploy the operator. Prometheus operator has a Helm chart that is maintained by the Helm community itself. And this is the option that we will use in this video to set up Prometheus monitoring. So Helm will do the initial setup and operator will then manage the running Prometheus setup. So let's jump right into the demo clean minikube state so I don't have any components here yet and I have a link to Prometheus operator helm chart and here in the documentation I can see the helm command to install that helm chart so I'm gonna take that and we can give it a name so I'm gonna call it Prometheus this is the repository name the Helm repository, um, the official one, and the name of the chart. And I'm going to execute this and we will see all the different pieces that will be created from that Helm chart. So the execution is done, but this will take a couple of minutes to actually start up all the different components. So you see all the components are running. These are just the pods that were created. You saw how fast the actual installation was with Helm. It was just one command and all the components got created. So now let's actually take a look at everything or different parts that were created. So I'm going to do kubectl get all. And here are all the different Kubernetes components of Prometheus clusters. So I had a clean minikube cluster. These are um, everything that was just created. So let's go through different parts. These are all the pods. And these are the services of different Prometheus stack components. And let's actually start from here because these are the managing the high level uh, components. So we have two stateful sets. So the first one is Prometheus itself. 
So here you see this weird chained name. There are three Prometheus names here. And this is the actual core Prometheus server based on the main image. And here you see that the Prometheus pod stateful set was actually created and is going to be managed by the operator. That's why you see the upper prefix here. The other stateful set is the alert manager, which is another part of the stack. Here you see three deployments. So we have Prometheus operator itself. This is the main one that actually created Prometheus and alert manager stateful sets. That's why they have the same prefix here. And we have Grafana, which is its own deployment. And we have kube state metrics. Kube state metrics is basically its own Helm chart. So it's a dependency of this Helm chart that we just installed. So kube state metrics application, basically what it does is it scrapes Kubernetes component metrics themselves. So it monitors the health of deployments and stateful sets and pods inside the cluster and makes it available for Prometheus to scrape, which is pretty cool because you get the Kubernetes infrastructure monitoring out of the box with this setup. So you don't have to configure anything for that. And the replica sets are created by deployment. So this is just underlying component of this one. So it's the same for Grafana, KubeState Metrics and Prometheus operator. And an interesting one, you have a daemon set in this stack of node exporter. So first of all, daemon set is a component which will run on every single worker node of Kubernetes. That's what a daemon set characteristic is. And node exporter component of Prometheus, basically what it does is it connects to the server itself or it lays over the server and it translates the server metrics, worker node metrics, so to say, like CPU usage, the load on that server and all this stuff. It transforms them into Prometheus metrics so they can be scraped. So that's also pretty neat because you have that information also configured inside the stack out of the box. And obviously those pods are just coming from the deployments and stateful sets. And you have also a bunch of services, which each component has its own. You have an alert manager, Grafana and so on. So just to put it in a perspective or in a, in a big picture perspective, we have set up the monitoring stack itself that is going to monitor different parts. And in addition to that, by default, you'll already get a out of the box monitoring configuration for your Kubernetes cluster. So your worker nodes and the statistics on the worker nodes are being monitored and the Kubernetes components like pods and deployments and replicas, stateful sets and so on are also being monitored. And this configuration is there out of the box. So where does this configuration actually come from? Let's actually check. We also have config maps that were created and you see there are a bunch of them. And obviously we're not gonna go and look in each one of them, but just briefly, you have configurations for all the different parts. They're also managed by the operator, as you see with the prefix here. And this includes all the information to how Prometheus monitoring stack will connect to the default metrics, scrape that information and, and do all this stuff. So you have the configuration, uh, files and you also have the default rule file for Prometheus and you also have secrets also for Grafana for Prometheus the operator itself again for different components this will include the certificates this will include the username passwords for different UI parts and so on so you have a bunch of different stuff so maybe now it makes even more sense what I said at the beginning that the first option of putting all these different YAML files together yourself would be a lot of effort because then you have to go through and really set up this whole thing yourself. Whereas it has already been done for you and it's maintained and managed so you can just reuse it. And another interesting thing that was also created from this stack are the CRDs. CRDs are custom resource definitions. This is another concept in Kubernetes, which I will make a separate video about it and explain it in detail. What are the concepts? Why is it used? But just so you know that Prometheus monitoring stack setup 
includes these custom resource definitions. So there's more stuff to it. We can also check what's inside the Prometheus operator and other pods actually. What containers are running inside, which images are they based on and so on. So I'm gonna print out the stateful sets. And this is the Prometheus one. So we can do uh, describe stateful set. Prometheus and we can save it in the file so that we can see the syntax highlighting and so stuff better. So I'm just going to call it Prometheus and we can also see what's inside alert manager. And what's also interesting is the operator itself. So this one right here, it's a deployment, describe deployment. And this is the operator. So basically describe just gives you um, some information about the container and the images and stuff like this. You can also get the whole uh, configuration file using kubectl get um, deployment and then you output it as a YAML. But I just want to look into the uh, containers and the images. So let's actually open those files in the editor. So these are the files. Let's actually go to the um, section where the containers are. And that's it. Right, so these are the containers. This is the main pod where the whole thing is running, where the actual Prometheus is running. And we have Prometheus container, we have the config reloader, and we have rules config reloader. And I'm gonna explain in just a minute what they are. So let's first look at the Prometheus. Sometimes it's interesting to see what images they're based on and which versions you have. So you can check it here actually. Um, you also see which port they're running at and so on, and all the arguments in case you need to check something here. What's also interesting are the mounts. So this is where Prometheus gets actually all the configuration data. So for example, there's Prometheus configuration file, there is a rules file, and some certificates, and everything, all of this is mounted into Prometheus pod so that it has access to it. So what you need to know about this is that configuration file is where Prometheus basically defines what endpoints it should scrape. So it has all the addresses of applications that expose this slash metrics endpoint. So it knows where to get them from. And it also has rules file. Rules file basically defines different rules. Uh, for example, it could be um, alerting rules that states that when, for example, something happens on the server or uh, CPU usage spikes to a certain percentage, then send out this email to some people. So these are separate configuration files and both of them are mounted into a Prometheus pod. And here, these two side containers, so to say, the helper containers of the main Prometheus, they help reloading. So for example, when the configuration changes, these containers are responsible for reloading and letting Prometheus know that there are changes in the configuration. So this is the config reloader. And obviously the config reloader has access to Prometheus configuration file. And this is the endpoint of Prometheus itself because it's running on a port 9090. And this is a mount path inside the pod. So each container can access that path. And then we also have the rules config file that does the same, but for the rules file, basically. And this one obviously has access to where the rules file lives. Now, you may be asking, where does the configuration come from? Where does the rules file come from, right? Because we haven't defined that. That is also part of the stack. Out of the box, you get this default Prometheus configuration file with default configuration, and you get the default rules file. And these are created as config maps. So if we print out the config maps, we see there is a whole list of them. So it might be actually difficult to search it in that list. So the way that you can actually easily find that is here, for example, for the config file, right here you have the mount path, right? So it's Prometheus config and you have this YAML file. And if you go to the mounts, 
you see the path and you see where this mount is coming from, right? So first, how the mount works is you mount a volume inside the pod and then the individual containers can actually mount those volumes inside the container path so they can access those mounts of the pods. So this is the volume that was mounted inside, inside the pod. So we can go and check that. So these are the pod volumes and we have the config one. So this is the one right here. And you see it's a secret type. So it's not a config map, it's a secret. And this is the name of the secret. So we can go back and check the secrets. And we can also look inside. So I'm gonna do uh, get secret and the name of the secret. Uh, this is the one and we can do YAML output and I'm also going to save it into a secret YAML. Let's clear that and let's see our secret. So you see the Prometheus YAML file and this is the name that is mounted here. And this is obviously base64 encoded because it's secret, but you can decode it and see all the information there. And we can also see where uh, a rules file is coming from. So in the rules file config reloader, we have mount. And this comes from the pod volume, which is called this long thing. And if we go down in the volumes part, this is a config map with the name of this. So again, I'm going to do get config map with the name and put it as a YAML and I'm going to save it config.yaml like this. And this is the rules file. So we have the name of the file here and this is the file contents basically where the different rules are defined. So we have the alert rules and some other stuff. So this is how you can check where this default stuff is coming from. And then you can also check the configuration. And obviously when you have to adjust something, for example, add a new endpoint to scrape, you will go to the secret file, the Prometheus YAML file, and you're gonna do adjustments there. In a later demo video, I'll also show you how to add an exporter as a site container for, uh, for example, a database pod that you have running, and then configure Prometheus to scrape that endpoint as well. So in that video, you will see how to adjust the configuration file so you can add a new scraping endpoint. So let's also quickly check what's in the alert manager. So here we have again the main container, which is alert manager, and we have all the configuration stuff here as well. And this one also has a default configuration file, alert manager.yaml, and the same helper container config reload. And then we also have the operator which basically has this Prometheus operator. You can also check what the, the image documentation, what it does um, and how it works. And this is basically the, the orchestrator of the whole Prometheus monitoring stack. So this manages all the different moving parts of that stack. It loads all this configuration stuff and it kind of orchestrates how everything works. So all these things are kind of interconnected with each other. But obviously you don't need to understand how all of these things work. Important thing to understand is how to add or adjust the alert rules or alert configuration. And the second one is how to adjust the Prometheus configuration. So you can add new endpoints, for example, for scraping. So these are the two things that you have to understand. The rest is just for overview to have a bit of understanding how these components are made up. So now let's go back to the console. Let's actually clear that. And I'm going to print out the services that we have. So here you see Grafana. This is the UI or data visualization for um, Prometheus data. So how do we access the UI for Grafana? As you see, all the services are cluster IP type, which is the internal service. So they're not open to external requests. They're all closed. So usually in production, what you would do is you would configure ingress and then point ingress rules to Prometheus Grafana. So in this setup, we're going to access Grafana 
um, using port forward. So for that, we need a deployment actually and not service. So I'm going to check that. So we need Grafana deployment. The command is kubectl port forward. Actually, let's get the pod, kubectl pod. And let's check the port where Grafana is running. kubectl logs. So we have multiple containers inside and we need to choose one, Grafana. So we see servers listening at port 3000. This is the port we're going to forward. And we also have user, uh, the default user, which is called admin. Let's actually clear that. kubectl port forward, deployment, deployment, Prometheus Grafana. That's what it, that's what it was called and port 3000 and this will open port 3000 localhost 3000 and we have the login page so we saw the default username is admin the password actually looked up here in the chart the prometheus operator chart here you have the default password you can change that of course and now we have the grafana ui so in Grafana, you have a pretty good overview of the whole stack. Um, for example, you can see different alert rules. You can also use PromQL query language to query the data from the Prometheus database, and you can get different kinds of data. And you can also see the data that Prometheus is already collecting and scraping. So in Manage dashboards, you have a list of the things that Prometheus stack is monitoring already. So as I said, Node Exporter already scrapes the information about the node itself. We just have one node, which is Minikube. So this is the IP address of the of Minikube node. You can check that here. So this is the same one. And here you can see uh, different metrics of Minikube node, like CPU usage, memory usage, etc. So I'm gonna get pods, doesn't matter. So this is a node exporter that scrapes that and the with the cube state metrics we also have information of different parts or different components of kubernetes like api server the pods namespaces and so on so we can actually check that for example in the pod you can get different metrics like again cpu usage memory bandwidth and so on and here you can choose the namespace and you can choose different pods that you want to uh, check the status of um, you also have monitoring of the master processes like the scheduler and API server where you can also see some stuff. And Prometheus also monitors itself by default. So you have a Prometheus endpoint that is being scraped and here you can see different stuff. Later when we add configuration to Prometheus to scrape different endpoints, we will see some additional components here as well. And you can also create your own dashboards depending on what information you want to see. In addition to Grafana, you also have um, other UI. So for example, Prometheus itself has its own UI. So we can access them also using the port forward. Port forward. And as we saw, Prometheus is running on port 1990. So let's do that. 1990. And here you have the Prometheus UI, where you can also display the alerts. You can also display the configuration, which metric endpoints are being executed. And you can also use the PromQL language to query different stuff. So here you have the alerts, some default alerts, which are configured from the default alert rules file. And here you can see the configuration of Prometheus which is pretty long. If you're just starting off, it might take time to learn that because I think it's pretty complex. And here you can also display the targets. So each target that you are scraping, or here you see the pods that are mo being monitored and their health status. And here you see, for example, some things uh, down. And here again, you can see your rules configuration. So Prometheus UI can also be helpful or interesting in some cases and you can get a lot of information there as well. So to summarize, 
basically we deployed the whole Prometheus monitoring stack using Helm. The deployment process was pretty easy and straightforward. It was just one command, which basically in the background creates the whole array of components that make up the stack. And you saw like a very brief overview of what these different components are, what they do. And in the later videos, I will make a Prometheus demo where we configure an additional metrics endpoint for, um, for example, a database application that you have running in a cluster. So basically how you can monitor different services that you have running in the cluster and also your own application by exposing metrics endpoint. So thank you for watching and see you in the next video.